Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Blinking Gear doing another review. And I think it only makes sense to start off anyway with this channel doing reviews on guns I'm very passionate about and like quite a bit. So no surprise if you see the main channel. I happen to be a big fan out of nowhere of the SPAS-12. A very iconic gun. You may recognize it from certain video games and movies. And nothing else looks close to what a SPAS-12 looks like. So iconic looking and also iconic in its function. So real quickly, I'll just mention on the main channel, I've already made a video with it. Not so much a review, surface level review maybe. We're gonna go a little bit more into it on this channel, of course. Recently with Kentucky Ballistics and his incident, he's recovering and so I had the opportunity to make a video for his channel. And so when I have the opportunity to make a video for Kentucky Ballistics, I can't just bring one SPAS-12 to the table. So I bought another one just to dual wield them and be a little extra. So I justify it just because you know, YouTube videos. So I guess we're just gonna go ahead and summarize what this gun is real quickly and we'll go a little bit more into it just as far as the history and whatnot. But what is the SPAS-12? So yeah, like I said, you may, first thing you'll recognize is just the iconic look. Some of that being this overfolded industrial looking stock with all the holes here with the hook. You may recognize it without the hook as well because that can be removed. Um, but yeah, so that overfolding stock, and we'll explain that in just a bit here. Press this button, overfold it, press it again. Click it in, press this, and then the shoulder piece does that. Now the hook itself can be rotated uh, to have one arm shooting if you're shooting out of a vehicle. This was totally made through and through with law enforcement in mind, as I'll mention on the next kind of iconic point of this gun. Um, but yeah, so one-handed shooting with quite a heavy gun because of that hook. So that's why that's on there. So if you wanted to totally remove it, you could, and then fold it again, and that probably will be another silhouette you'll recognize quite a bit from certain video games. They'll only have it in that configuration. Again, very iconic. Another iconic look to it is that very recognizable heat shield with all those like, uh, almost looks like M-Lock, they're ahead of the game. No, but it's just a heat shield. So again, the iconic piece of it, just from the looks. Some people may recognize this fast hole but not know much about it as far as its function. One of the most iconic things about its function is that it can be fired in pump action or semi-auto. Why would they do that? So this gun was actually made through and through to be a semi-automatic gun. And, uh, but for law enforcement in mind, they thought that they might have to shoot some less than lethal rounds for crowd control, whether it be in bags or whatever. And those just don't have the potency to cycle it on semi-auto. In fact, when I shoot birdshot, for the most part, it doesn't even cycle. You need some double-op buck uh, or slugs to get this thing to actually cycle reliably. Um, so in the event that they're going to be shooting less than lethal rounds, you could put it in pump action and cycle it yourself like a good old true pump action that a lot of law enforcement officers are probably used to operating anyway. And so the way you uh, manipulate that though is you press this button on the underside and you pull it back for pump action and you press it forward, pull it for semi-auto. So now that we're familiarized with the SPAS-12 and why it looks a certain way and operates a certain way, let's go a little bit into the history about it. This is an Italian shotgun. Initially invented actually in 1972, uh, but production from 1979 to 2000. Um, so yeah, Italian shotgun manufacturer, Franchi. I've heard it pronounced all kinds of ways, so I'm hoping I'm saying it right, but Franchi SPAS-12. Interestingly though, is of all the SPAS-12s, this is what I've heard routinely enough to say it myself, but that is that the United States has imported about 5% of all SPAS-12 production because of the assault weapons ban. And when that got lifted in 2004, the SPAS-12 was already out of production. And that's why we don't have that many in the United States. And that's why values are the way they are. I'll touch on that in a second here. Um, but yeah, so of that said, I've heard a wide range of how many there are in the United States. The lower ones are because people are trying to sell them and maybe hype them up some more. So I don't know what it is. It's certainly under 2000. I haven't heard anything at 2000. I've heard some people on Gunbroker try to list them and say that there's only 1500 or 1400 in the United States. Most commonly, I heard somewhere between 16 and 1800. Um, so if you go with those numbers, let's call it 17-ish, maybe 1800 SPAS-12s uh, SPAS in the United States. Again, just because of the production years and the assault, assault weapons ban, the way it had worked out. That brings me to actually talking about the assault weapons ban and the um, depiction of this and the name of it. So SPAS-12, that's spelled with an S, S-P-A-S, -S, initially stood for Special Purpose Automatic Shotgun. Makes sense to me. Well, they tried to change that acronym, keeping the name, saying it's actually a sporting purpose automatic shotguns and trying to keep it you know, coming to the United States. In fact, later on, they had to get one with a, um, a fixed stock, no overfolding and all kinds of stuff like that. And so that's why this one right here with the extended tube and the uh, overfolded stock is a little bit more, you know, quite a bit more desirable. 
Uh, plus it's the icon, really. So stupid, you know, politics had to play into the role on it, but now it's just kind of a part of the history on this thing. Something pretty interesting, worth certainly worth mentioning in a review on this past 12, is the recall they had with their uh, first safety lever. This one's more recognizable for his past 12. Nothing looks like a safety lever like this. It's an oversized, hopefully it's focusing, oversized safety, uh, safety lever to use with, um, with ease while using gloves or whatever. So pretty much it's on safe right here. You flip that over to fire and then back on safe. So this piece here was recalled because ironically it wasn't safe. In fact, so you can have the gun, imagine it being cocked and locked, you put it on safe without touching the trigger when you put it on fire. Right when it went on fire, it shot the gun. It's not an if, it's a when. All of them are faulty and they'll wear at some point and they, uh, the safety, when put on fire, um, will fire the gun. Not what you want. And so they uh, then recalled it to a traditional cross bolt safety and those are perfectly safe. So interestingly, when I bought my first Fast 12, it actually came with this one, which I thought was cool. And for a fee, you can actually send this off and have it converted to a cross bolt but I think this is just kind of part of history, so I don't want to change that. So I had to go on a gun broker and I sourced another uh, trigger group with a cross bolt. That way I could have both, but I paid the premium. I paid just under $600 for that trigger group and cross bolt safety. But I think ultimately it's worth it just for collecting sakes, because these things are on the way up in value to have both. I think it's kind of cool. The other Spaz 12 I got only had the cross bolt. So if you're planning on shooting the gun and bring it out, which I highly suggest you do, I would seek one with the cross bolt but if you happen to have this one, just be cognizant of it, but I wouldn't so much do the conversion. I think this is kind of cool to have in original form. Just my opinion. Next thing I want to talk about actually is kind of what to look for. If you're in the market for Spaz 12, a couple of things that you could expect. And if these things aren't broken, it's certainly not the end of the world. Um, and that's why I want to give a big shout out to actually Spaz 12 project. So these guns are older. Like I said, they happen to be 75 and 1976. These two in particular, not exactly new. And so they have wearable components. For example, there is a, um, a little buffer right here uh, to take a lot of the brunt from the gun shooting in semi-automatic. That buffer was made out of this really weird rubber plasticky material that didn't age well, uh, to say the least. It came to me and that buffer was just pieced out. I get needle nose and, and pull it out slowly. But that's not the end of the world because Fast Swap Project actually makes a better one that won't corrode and deteriorate away. Same thing with the grip plug right here, this little rubber uh, grip. This started corroding and cracking away because it was the original Spaz 12 project. Thankfully makes that part as well. So for how niche this gun is to the United States market, the fact that a company like Spaz12project.com makes the wearable parts, I think is pretty darn cool. With that said, you could kind of just get any Spaz 12 and anything that may be wrong with it, you could probably more than likely get that thing operating under $100 worth of parts. That's pretty darn sweet. So that's the short of it is if you're looking at a Spaz 12 that hasn't been shot in 30, 40 years, more than likely it's not operable right now, but you're about $100 away from making it operable and that's pretty darn sweet. So now there's no excuse. Uh, now you gotta go out and shoot them. And now I wanna talk about that a little bit. You wouldn't expect it to shoot as well as it does just given the age. You think it's only for the cool factor, it's kind of a nuisance to shoot, whatever. Um, the reason I fell in love with it is because of the way it shot. It's got this really iconic ping sound almost in the semi-automatic uh, semi form. Pretty darn sweet. Just a very iconic sounding gun, very iconic looking, and it just happens to shoot really, really nicely. Part of that, I'm saying it shoots nicely from a recreational shooter, mind you, because the thing is kind of heavy, not gonna lie. Just being constructed the way it is with the kind of complex mechanism of it, it's a bit heavy. Not too heavy though, I will say. Um, but heavy enough to where when you're shooting 12 gauge semi-automatic, the thing feels really good. It doesn't kick hard at all. I think it's super cool to shoot it with the stock folded, you know, just have it folded and hold it out. Funny enough though, depending on how potent your double lot buck or slugs or whatever are, sometimes it won't actually cycle reliably doing that because you really need to brace it on something, um, like on your shoulder with the stock to kind of have that energy to, to I don't know, to, to cycle the next round reliably. Uh, whereas if you're holding it just, you know, out here with no stock, it kind of absorbs back and it doesn't have enough of that, um, I don't know, kinetic energy or whatever to cycle the next one in, interestingly. Another thing is on pump action, you have to be really authoritative with the throw of the pump uh, to get that shell out. Sometimes it'll kind of get caught. So you have to really be aggressive with it. I'll probably, I'll probably be playing some B-roll here so you can see what I'm talking about. It always kind of gets caught at the end unless you really throw it back. 
Uh, so this gun demands you to, uh, to take a good hold of it and shoot it aggressively, and then you'll be rewarded by having a pretty soft shooting uh, 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun. As far as the market on the gun itself, I said I would mention that. A little bit all over the place. Well, I'll just tell you right now, I, I bought this one in December for about $3,600 and it needed about $100 in parts to get it running. So there's that. But it did come with the original Franke hook. You know, no, it's original because it has an F. Don't know if you guys are gonna see that. It's got an F, if it'll focus, um, on the bottom kind of rubber piece there. Hopefully you see it. Uh, there are replication uh, hooks that are not trying to look real because they don't have that and they're significantly cheaper. I think Spaz 12 Project themselves actually has some. And those are about like 140 or 150 ish dollars. And maybe I'm wrong. Uh, if you actually find an original, these will sell for over four to five hundred dollars from what I'm seeing right now. So I paid thirty six hundred. It came with the hook. Needed about hundred dollars worth of parts. Then only about two months ago, two and a half months ago, I bought this one for thirty four hundred dollars. It was ready to go, needed no parts, and it also came with the hook. So that's around my market. I'm paying on average, let's just call it about um, 35, 36 ish hundred dollars per spaz. I've seen them sell for as high as same condition. I've seen some people pay as high as $4,500. I've seen buy now listings on Gunbroker for 5,000, but they sat for a little while. And some people I'm sure have stolen for even less than what I paid. Um, but then when you rarely see them with the original box and papers, I've seen those sell for six to $7,000. That is actually crazy because the Spaz 12s, I mean, what I paid is crazy too, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, that's only because the Spaz 12s were selling for less than two grand not long ago. I'm sure they were like just over a thousand dollars, a bit longer than that. But you know, people are, uh, you know, with gun collectors and just recreational shooters like myself, are, uh, are seeing this and knowing that just with the low importation of it and how recognizable they are, it's just something to, to hold on to. So I don't think they're losing value anytime soon. Um, and so I've justified getting two. Uh, they're not so much investments. I'm gonna be using them for what I need to do with the gun channels. Um, but I just figured I'd kind of share the passion and kind of talk about them a little bit more here. It already was a, had a cool factor with me just from the looks and what it's been featured in. But not until I shot it did I realize that it's actually a fantastic shooter, and that's why I'm just head over heels in love with this gun. I'm trying to look around here, man. I don't know if there's anything I'm leaving out. If there is, I apologize. Uh, but that's about as informative rich I wanted to get with this video. If you guys want to see a recreation shoot, hopefully I put enough of that footage here as well. But if not, um, if you haven't seen my video on my personal channel where I was shooting uh, Dragon's Breath, all that fun stuff, check that out. Or check out um, Kentucky Ballistics' video with me dual wielding both of these. So that does it for a quick review. Well, not so much quick anymore, is it? Never mind. That does it for the review on the Spaz 12. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.